So this is a really cool blueprint or schematic look that you can do in Nomad Sculpt. So I'll quickly show you how to take any of your models and make them look like this. Okay, so we've done our modeling, we've finished the modeling, done any posing that we want to do. And here I've taken two models and I've crushed them all together. So what do I mean by that? Let's have a look. So we'll zoom out, we'll have a look up here and we'll put our um, little pin on so we can hold open the, the scene menu. And we've got two models all compressed into one. And to do that, you would just use join. So that's, you know, obviously we can't do that now because it's already joined into, into one part. So we don't voxel remesh, you don't need to, you just join them together. So they're all crushed into one model like that. And that's, so we've got the crab and we've got the mech in this particular scene. And that's how we, we can, really start. So the first thing we want to do, let's just do the simple things. So we'll put an outline on. So if you see there, I've got a, a black outline, but we want that to be white. So come down into the display settings, change your outline to white. And that's your first thing. And you want that outline for everything in the scene, apart from maybe the background. So actually what you can do is just join the two together. So here I've got the crab and the mech. Bear in mind, you've finished your scene, you've done your posing. So you might, you might want to bring the two together, you know, you, you want to have done everything when you do this bit. So, you know, don't do this before you, you, you've finished. Then select the two, just do join, and they're all one. So that white outline now will show around everything that's in the scene that's selected. So that's the first thing to do. And the next thing you want to do is to change everything to white. Well, it's already white, but you just can't tell. So what does that mean? So if you come up here, an easy way to tell is look under shading and you can see that we've got a, a matte cap. Now, for those of you that know, a matte cap is a, a, a type of way to do shading that's using an image and it's this image here of this, this, this creamy colored ball so we can never get rid of that creamy color that that's as white you could you could change it any color you want down here and you'll never be able to get rid of that um skin color so you have to get a white matte cap so click in here and just use the normal white matte cap and that's that's a good start um at least it will look um you know brighter and 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 white at the very beginning so we might change it to blue in a minute but that's that's the first one done so what about a background so you can either change the color to a blue so that would give you a blue um uh, something that's like a schematic but there's no grid on that so you can just download a grid and just add it in so if you go to reference images um i've loaded a few in here so you've got a straightforward grid which is just downloaded from the internet and just put in, basically I just put it into Photoshop and changed it to blue. And you can scale that, you can move it around, you can make it four times as big before you even start. Whatever you need to do, that, that, that's, that's the, the, the way to add that in. But what you can also do is change that to one that's got more graphics on it. So I've actually pre-done this video and I've already made the end result and I've put the end result onto this image here. So actually, um, there's the robots in the way they're going to look at the finish. So I've actually now got them in the background. So that, that can work really well for text, that can work really well for you know sci-fi graphics, anything that you want uh, in your scene. But now we need these to be blue, as I said, so they're white at the moment. So we're gonna go over to the bluish sort of color and we're gonna bring the blue to match the background. We want it lighter than the background, but we do want the right, the correct hue. So find the blue of the background that you've chosen or something along the right lines for you, like so and then maybe pull it back a bit. And then don't forget to force paint all. What you don't want is any, um, you, you can't affect this obviously, and you don't want any roughness or metalness because there, there isn't any when you're using a matte cap. If you wanted to mess with these, you have to go in and you have to use a, a lit situation, which, which we're not gonna do. So, so these make no difference. So you paint it the color you want, and then really, you're almost there. You, you're sort of getting what you want. Um, you can have a look at it in um, a turntable if you want. That's a, a good thing to do at this point. So you could, you know, you could record a video of that and it really looks good on your showreel if you're doing, you know, if you want to start showing off your work to other people, doing a nice turntable of this kind of work is, you know, it's a nice thing to do. Maybe put them on a stand before you do it. 
but there's still no detail within the model is there so go back to the turntable and turn it off and the last thing we need to do is put post process on so you can see there it's it is actually on but there's no settings on so we only need a few in here so we don't need reflection don't need global illumination as you can see it doesn't really affect it with matcap here uh, ambient occlusion might be too much see how the dark areas get darker maybe a tiny bit of it depth of field we don't want for a schematic bloom we don't want tone mapping we don't want color grading we don't want but what we do want is curvature and i've literally switched it fully on for bump and for cavity so it will go deep into the crevices and on the high edges and i've changed them both to white if you went red on on them or um i'll just show you some different colors go you know bright red on both you'd get that effect and the only thing that would be white would be the outline but we don't want that what we want is white on both and that gives you uh, an indication a zoom in and i'll show you you can see there it's giving you white where the barnacles are it's giving you really nice white edges where it turns and it pretty much gives you everything that, that, that you want for this for this kind of look and now four finger tap gets rid of everything just make sure we've, we're off the gizmo four finger tap and you can position everything around and then you can start screenshotting or you can you know turn it vertically and screenshot or you can just do exports so if I do four finger tap back and you can export your images um, up down here, you want export. Uh, you don't want render transparent background because you want this grid in there and you can or, or you may want to just do them without the, 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 the background and then comp them up in Procreate or Photoshop. Totally up to you. But well, that's a great way you can you can move the light in a little bit with three fingers but again because it's a mat cap it doesn't really help you but this is i, I use this technique all the time to do um sci-fi graphics uh, i use it in zbrush i use it in blender and i use it here in nomad so you can do it very very simply and quickly in nomad so have a go at that and let me know how you get on i hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up as it does help us to get in front of other people who might like this kind of content and if you're liking the video enough to give it a like well why not subscribe to the channel we try and help people create things in new and innovative ways and hopefully we can help you have a great week